Hey everyone, this is Android Cemetery here. Welcome back to the final video in the tutorial series. In this lesson, we're going to be importing our model and textures into Marmoset Toolbag, creating a final rendered image, and also creating a rendered rotation video. Okay, so we are now in Marmoset Toolbag. So first thing we're going to do is import our model. So let's go to File, Import Model, and search for the FBX of the sci-fi crate. Okay, so now that we've got that imported, we want to add our material. So we're going to be using a preset, and I'm going to stick with Unreal 4. That works pretty well. So there's two ways of applying our material map. We can either select the square and then search for your specific material, or you can just have a folder ready and then just drag it onto each of the squares, which is usually what I do. So for the normal map, I'm going to select normal map, drag that into there. I'm also going to make sure that I have Flip Y turned on. If you export from Substance Painter, you need to make sure that Flip Y is turned on. Roughness map. I'm going to click and drag that. Albedo, which is the base color. Down here, metalness, the metallic. And then the ambient occlusion map, which isn't currently turned on. You need to select the arrow. Occlusion. You can see it there now. The AO, ambient occlusion. Drag that into here. And then we also want to turn on our emissive. So click here, emissive. Then we want to grab our emissive and drag it in over here. So we can close that now. And now that our material is ready, we can drag this and apply it to our model. Make sure that you apply it to each mesh. Just click and drag. You can also click and drag over here as well. Click and drag on these two as well. You can change the emissive intensity right here. If you want it higher or lower, I'm just gonna keep it at the same. Okay, so first things first, I'm gonna go to sky over here in our scene. So now I'm gonna go into presets and I'm gonna change my HDR now the HDRs slightly alter the overall luminosity of the scene and changes the overall lighting depending on the image. So you can see if it's a museum, it looks very indoors. If you just want basic lighting, you can always pick indoor fluorescent. So for this scene, we're just gonna stick with indoor fluorescent. Click done. I wanna lower the brightness a bit. So the settings are over on this side. You can lower the brightness, something like this. I also just want to change the background color. At the moment, it's set to ambient sky. If I click the arrow, I want to change it to color. Then I want to change the color to something kind of dark green. To something like this. Feel free to change it to whichever color you want. I press OK. So something else that I want to do is I also want to add specific lights to the setup. And I can do that by clicking in here and dragging to see where a good light setup is. And something else that I want to do is I want to add a shadow catcher by going to scene, add object, shadow catcher. So this adds a floor and also gives us a shadow, making the render look much more realistic. So if I go back to sky, I can change where I want the shadow to be. So I want the shadow to be a bit at the side over here, like that. And I'm pretty happy with that. Something else that I want to do is I actually want to add some lights to make this emissive really stand out. So I'm going to go to Scene, Add Object, Light. So right now, it's being imported as a Spotlight. If I go to my settings over here, I want to change from Spotlight to Omni Light. Using the arrow keys, I just want to drag it in. Just rotate it a bit so the arrow is pointing this way. I want to move it along this area here. Something like that. So right now you can see it's a white light. We want to change that color to match the pink. Something like this. And now I just want to press Ctrl D to duplicate it and just move the duplicated object to the center here. Control D again, and then move another one to the side over here. Maybe around here, 
I might just control the D again and have another one over here. It's going to move this one. Control D and move that down. Now I'm just going to do a quick time lapse of me adding more lights to the side over here. So feel free to pause the video and do it yourself. I'm just going to be doing the same thing. Control D and then moving the lights. Okay, so now that we've finished that, I want to actually go down to my emissive and where it says intensity, I want to bring that all the way up. So now it really looks like there's an emissive glow. Got some really nice light details along here and along these edges. And it really makes it look much more realistic now with all the nice lighting. Now I can see we do have an issue. There's a bunch of shadows everywhere. So if we just go to each light and we want to turn off cast shadows because we don't want these lights to cast any shadows. So we can just go to each light, turn off cast shadows. So the radius of some of these lights are a bit too big. So I'm just going to select this light and down the settings, I'm going to change the distance to something a lot lower. You can see this light is affecting a lot of this area, which we don't want. We can just lower the distance a bit. So like this, select this light, lower the distance, something like this. And just do that for each of the lights. I think these should be fine. Maybe this one. Slow the distance and the area of effect. So we just want to have the radius of the light to be a little smaller so it's not affecting the large area. So now that we're finished with the light setup, we can go up here to render. We want the resolution to be quite high, so we want it to be double. You can turn on wireframe if you want a wireframe version of your final render. Now you can turn on global illumination, which is something we're probably going to do probably at the end. It essentially simulates bounce light and makes the scene much more realistic. Depending on how fast your computer is, your computer might lag like mine is. So I'm going to turn it on at the end when I'm doing the final render. I'm going to turn on ambient occlusion. Just turn up the strength a bit. Just to add some extra ambient occlusion. You can see it also adds some shadow down here. Just adjust the size to something like this. You can choose to add a Marmoset Toolbag watermark to your final render if you wish to do that. Now I'm going to go to my main camera. There are some settings over here. We're not going to mess with these ones. Some post effects. So if you want to add some more exposure. I usually don't use any of these in my final render. I might bump the saturation up, usually just a tiny bit something like 1.1 just to bring out some of the colors. I usually turn on just a bit of sharpen, something like that. I'm also going to add just a little bit of bloom and this will really give the emissive light a more realistic look. Just a little bit. Something like this maybe. I usually always use a vignette. So a vignette is pretty much this dark outline around the image. I think it really helps focus on the final render. I usually have it set to something in the middle, like here. The softness, something usually around here. And I don't usually add any grain. So we're almost finished. Just want to go back to my sky. Bump the brightness up just a bit. Something like that. And now I'm going to go back to my render. I'm going to go to lighting. I'm going to turn on global illumination. Now it does make your scene a little bit darker. So if you just go back to your main camera, where it says tone mapping, just bump up your exposure a bit. Okay, so with that, we have our final render. I'm just going to line this straight up in the scene, something like that. I'm going to go into Edit, Preferences, and here where it says Output, I just want to select where the render images export to. So I have my own images folder here. I'm going to select that folder, press OK. Now I'm going to go to Capture, I'm going to go to Settings, I'm going to keep 1920 by 1080. The sampling depends on the level of quality you want your image to be. You usually want it to be 400 at all times. Format, PNG, 
I don't want any transparency. So I'm gonna click OK. I'm gonna hit capture, image, and open. And there it is, our final rendered image of our sci-fi crane. Now another thing that I just want to show you is how to create a rotation of this crane. Now my computer is quite slow with the global illumination turned on, so I'm just going to turn it off. So now I'm just going to select my sci-fi crane over here, go to scene, add object, turntable. And now if I press play down here, it can now rotate. We do have a problem though, we want these lights to rotate with the model. So I just want to select all these lights, left click this one, hold down shift, left click this one to select them all. So we just want to drag these lights and make sure that they're under the turntable. Now when we press play, you can see the lights are also rotating with the model. So I'm just going to go back, I'm going to go to capture, video, I want it to be 1920 by 1080. Sampling. The video output can take quite a while, depending on how high you want it. It can usually go something like 100 or 25. Now, depending on how long you're willing to wait, it can take quite quite a while. So if we want 400, we're gonna leave the video format. We want the quality to be all the way to 100. Then we wanna export. I've got a separate folder here for video files. Just gonna call it sci-fi crate. rot for rotation and then I'm just gonna click Save and then there you have it a rotation turntable for your final model so congratulations on finishing the video series hope you guys had fun if you're interested in more 3d art tutorials consider subscribing hope you guys had fun and I'll see you next time